this week's YouTube Art School episode needs no intro. We're gonna sketch right into it. I'm gonna be showing you and explaining every step of my personal painting process. Walking you through it all as if you were just looking over my shoulder. Should be quite fun. You're about to really get a feel for my complete workflow. Something I've actually never shared publicly before. Very exciting and mysterious. So if you've been a subscriber for a while, you've probably seen me showcase a bunch of different, you know, methods to color your drawings. Heck, just two weeks ago, I made a video about cell shading. And while I'll often use those same methods to color my own drawings, because they were great and they have predictable outcomes, sometimes I like to focus less on the drawing and more on the sculpting. Sculpting with colors. What, bro? You'll see what I mean real soon. First though, let's see what I've been working on here so far. Like a lot of you, I'm sure, I've been playing a lot of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom recently, so it got me inspired to draw Zelda. But to give the subject a different twist, to be original, I'm drawing her as if she had to save the world on her own, like if Link was a deadbeat or something. Not the most unique idea, but whatevs. Alright, so I don't know Zelda's design from memory, so I went ahead and grabbed a few references that I figured might help me during the process. Some design references and some color references. I really like the mix of cool and warm pastel colors that the game features, so the plan is to try something similar. I have my subject figured out, so I'll normally just start with a rough sketch to dump my idea down on canvas as soon as possible. The sketch phase is the most important. It's where I'll figure out the composition of the piece, figure out most of the design aspects, and combine most of the elements that I want in the painting together. I spent maybe a bit more time on the drawing this time because I'm working off of an existing design, but like for an original character, often I'll be pretty loose to start and I'll figure out the design as I go instead. So with my lines done, I'm actually going right into colors. Very different from what I usually teach. I like to block out the background first since its light setup will be shared with the character and I think it's just easier to find something that looks cool for the background and then make it work for the character too, you know, versus the opposite. For some reason, I also find it more fun to paint a character on a background rather than on a white canvas. I don't know why, but I'm less likely to abandon the painting when I do that, so I do that. Also, I saved a few colors to use as swatches, inspired from my reference images. I wanted a mix of warm and cool colors, both dark and light. I don't force myself to use those, but you know, before I paint anything, I like to at least take a minute to think about my color palette. My idea this time is to have a rectangular tetrad color harmony using yellow and purple, blue and orange. So basically using the yellow and purple pair for the background and the blue and orange pair for the character. And then for color harmony ideas, you can check out my class where I go over most of them. I'll put a link down in the video description. The one I'm using is from that same class. Now, this is what I meant when I said that I was going to sculpt with colors. Using a soft brush, I'll just work on the shadows and the light at the same time like I did for the background. Splashing colors everywhere at first using the line art as guidelines, but you know, staying super loose with my brush strokes. I make it a point not to focus on details, which is why I try to leave the image relatively small, not zooming in. The way I organize the colors here serves the purpose of guiding the eyes towards the face of the character, which is usually the focal point for a painting like this. Maybe you'll notice I saved the brightest and warmest yellow for her hair as a way to bring attention to it. The green cape was also not planned. It doesn't quite fit my rectangular tetrad color harmony, but I think it'll work if I make it a bit more yellow as I go. For now, it also serves the purpose of guiding the eye towards the focal point of the painting because of the rarity of the green color within the piece. Rarity is eye-catching. And then the midsection of the character is heavy on small details, so I was worried it might get too busy and draw all the attention. So the green cape is a way to offset that a little bit. These small composition adjustments just happen all the time. Anyways, I think I can stop here for a minute. This right here is basically the blueprint for my painting. Looking at the thumbnail version in the left corner, if you squint, you know, that's basically what I planned the final image to look like. All that's left, I mean, there's still a lot of work left, but really most of it will be rendering. The bits that will make or break this painting are done at this point. If it looks crappy at this stage, I'll usually trash it. It doesn't happen often, but, but sometimes. And it's no big deal when it does, you know? It's not like I've invested hours at this point, maybe one hour at most. If it looks good though, I'll take this as motivation to go right into render mode, which I'll do next. Hopefully you're all following along so far, but if you're more of a beginner, this probably seems a bit too much. And it is, you know, it's not a process that I would recommend to my students, 
until they have a strong foundation as artists. A full digital painting like this is what I cover in the final term of my art program for a reason. You need to learn a lot of different things before this is possible. And of course, I teach it all in my art program that you can get on sale for just a couple more days. I have a lot of stuff for free here on YouTube already, but if you want the best possible structure, video classes covering every topic you might possibly need, exercises, assignments, a week by week study guide for the entire program, and an awesome community of art students on Discord. Check out the link to my art school program in the video description. There's still some time left before the sale expires. Don't miss out. And now it's time to move on to rendering. For this step, I'll finally allow myself to zoom in some more and start detailing everything. I'm not going into small details just yet though. Let's call the step level one render. I'm not worried about reflections, material properties, or special effects at this stage. My goal is just to go through the entire character and background and tighten up my brush strokes so that it follows the line art a bit more closely. And talking about that, you'll see as I work on this painting, I really have three main layers. The line art that I place on top of my stack with very low opacity, so it's just barely visible. It's just used as a guide, basically. Then I'll have one layer for my character and another for the background. Might seem crazy not to take advantage of multiple layers, but for personal art, it generally doesn't take any longer or shorter to do it either way. And well, I hate getting lost in layers, so the simpler, the better. Obviously, though, if I was doing client work, I would use more layers. And now I'm almost done with level one render. I've been moving things around in the background to better frame my character. I didn't like that the cape was just overlapping the rock cliff, so you know I carved out the rock to go around it. I like that better. This kind of composition is like a frame within a frame. I have the frame of the canvas, obviously, but the rock formation also frames the character, drawing more attention to it. Sometimes I'll use the background to tell more of a story, but this time it's just a glorified, you know, stand for the character. Now that I've painted over everything with a bit more detail, it's time for level two render. At this point, everything looks like this boring matte material. So I'll go over everything once more, adding reflections, material details, and just sharpening a lot of the details even more. Oh, and I also decided to change the blue from her outfit to a warmer teal like the real Zelda. The blue I had was just too similar to the Master Sword's color and it's just bugging me. This rendering step can take a bit of time, but it's super relaxing. I'll get a playlist going, a drink, and just spend hours painting this stuff. In total, I think the full painting took around like seven to eight hours based on the recorded content that I have. So not too long, but also pretty much all of this was within my comfort zone. And this specific render step, you know, it's like going from 480p resolution, you know, like a crappy pixelated video, to 720p maybe, so 480p being like render level 1 and 720p being render level 2. Not HD yet, but much better quality, you know, like I'm slowly increasing the resolution. And uh, also, you see me flip the canvas here and there, that's just when I get bored of looking at the same thing. You know, flipping the image almost makes it feel like a new painting. Sometimes it also highlights some problem that I hadn't noticed looking at it from the same side for too long. And uh, well, I've sped through that last render step since it's just more of the same. But now that it's done, I always have a choice to make. Do I move on to render level three, aka, you know, spend another two to three hours or more on this to make it look 1080p, like full HD, or do I wrap it up and move on to the special effects? Usually, I'll be happy with the results at the end of level two. I kind of am for this one here, but I feel like it might need a bit more polish to really pop. There's too many details around her waist. I would need to add more elsewhere to draw the attention away from it. Oh, and the brush strokes for the background are too noticeable still. I might still spend some time on this later, but in this case, it's not client work and I have a class to upload for you guys. So, uh, you know, I've achieved what I wanted with it. So I'll call it done here. Well, not quite. We still got some special effects, like I said. For that, I am planning some sort of lightning effect around the sword to make her look more of a badass. Also, to get some of that attention away from all the details of her midsection. I'm not letting that go. I can get something really quick with an outer glow layer style in Photoshop, like I have here. You know, from there, I just use the lasso tool for my selections, paint it in real quick, and then boom, I get some awesome looking lightning effects. What sorcery? Also, there's always some sort of particle floating in the air in the game too, so I'll add some in my scene as well. Just some quick brush strokes with a bit of a direction to them to make them feel like they're floating in the wind. You know, the same wind that's affecting her hair and her cape. Uh, that looks 
kind of cool. And well, that's about as far as I'll take that one today. This is the final result. All I see are problems that I want to fix, like her face looking a bit too flat, still an overwhelming amount of detail around her torso and pelvis. Like I would probably need to go back in there and change some of the design, honestly, to make it work better. The render quality is also a bit too rough in my taste in some parts, like I would really need another render pass to be fully satisfied. But there are things that I like too. I think the color and the composition work really well. The background was also a lot of fun. It feels like a place that I'd like to explore and I'm generally happy with the painting as a whole. It turned out pretty much exactly as I wanted, despite not having as much time to put on it. I guess it works great on a phone screen where you can't see too much of the details anyways. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this week's class. Not like the usual lessons, but I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments. Also, all the brushes that I use for the painting are available in my QBrush store. As with my art program, I have my starter set that you can actually get for free with the link in the video description. I used a number of brushes from it. And then there's my advanced painters pack that features all the other brushes. Those two brush packs are all I ever use. Go grab the free one, at least if you haven't already. And I'll catch you next week for another YouTube art school club.